Hi everybody, welcome back to the Shrimp Lab. Lou Lopez here, and thank you guys so much for all your support. You have no idea how much this means to me. I love shrimp, I love shrimping and the hobby. Um, not just not just eating shrimp, but I love that too. No, I do that around my other shrimp. Don't want them to get the wrong ideas. But also, I might just to remind them who's, who's the boss. All right, thanks for everything. Thanks for your support. Please, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button for me. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm going to be dropping content weekly for you guys. I'm going to be um, diving into everything from care to basics, tips and tricks, things to save you money, things to get your shrimp to breed more. Um, so we want to be shrimp breeders and uh, we've invested in the tank and we've invested in some active substrate, which we've talked about. Um, now we got to get the whole system going. We got to really, you know, make this ecological and biological system come alive so we can support shrimp and their habits and them going to the bathroom, them eating food, food going bad, all that kind of stuff. So there's three main parts in a cycle. You're going to have your ammonia, which comes off of rotting food, poop, anything else, plants that are starting to die in, the, in there and give, they'll start to give out ammonia. Well, so that's where your beneficial bacteria will come in. And having a, a cycle means having a healthy beneficial bacteria colony. The reason you want this is because when your ammonia spikes, it is very toxic. Just like ammonia that you know you have for cleaning or whatever, or used to back in the day, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to breathe in. It can literally burn their gills. It can kill them, and it makes for just a really harsh environment. Well, where the beneficial bacteria comes in is they actually live off of ammonia. They eat it and what they end up processing out is nitrite. Nitrite is also very dangerous for shrimp. It's not good to have in your tank for any aquarium fish. So what the beneficial bacteria end up doing is they end up eating the nitrite and then they boom, could poop out nitrate. And after they process that, the nitrate is a little less bad for your shrimp. You really wanna have low nitrate levels so how we do that is we have plants and plants will actually be able to absorb that as like a fertilizer at that point because it's already been broken down it's just more soluble and absorbable for plants so that whole process plus water changes will keep us having low to no nitrate and then no ammonia and no nitrate so building up that colony is really important and uh, that's why there's soil brands like ada amazonia that are just filled with ammonia so for ADA Amazonia it usually takes me about 60 to 80 days to cycle it, even hitting it with really good, you know, uh, beneficial bacteria, nitrifying bacteria. Um, you could seed the tank and it's going to help. It's going to probably cut about a month off of that. If you have already a healthy running tank without any bad algae or anything in it, then you can totally seed a tank like that. Um, so what I'm going to be going into is kind of like the next steps for cycling and uh, tips to kind of like help your cycle be a little bit stronger. As I said in the last video, uh, at this point I'm not uh, using nitrifying bacteria anymore, but I'm still using um, bacteria powder to grow algae. Algae and uh, biofilm, you're going to say biofilm, what's biofilm? Biofilm is uh, pretty much like a mold that grows on anything, it covers everything inside your tank in a healthy tank, and it's what shrimp mostly eat. They eat biofilm, algae, it's mostly, it's like 90% of their diet or 80% of their diet, the rest being, you know, proteins for minerals and all that kind of stuff. But without that, your shrimp won't have any grazing food. So the majority of the time they're eating grazing food and then usually once a day or whenever you feed them, that'll be their other supplementary meal. And then the rest of the time, they're just gonna be moving around constantly eating all the biofilm and algae. So biofilm grows, really good on, on wood, on um, you know things like that, that have more porous surfaces. Um, even your soil, it'll grow on there and stuff like that. And so you really wanna make your tank come alive. And uh, one that has really worked for me is uh, Vin's, Vin's Ecological Bacteria Group Powder. It creates really, really um, good fluffy green algae, which is just so beneficial to the tank. Um, you'll see, I'll show up a, a picture right here, one of my tanks when I'm cycling it, and the thing was covered in green algae, and uh, when I put the shrimp in there, I mean, I barely had to feed them. There's still algae in there that they're living off of, and now I'm starting to supplement feed for them, but 
babies live off of biofilm and algae and so if you want to have live ba like baby survival rate really go high you want that um, there's also other things that babies eat like snails actually the, the trail from a snail is really beneficial for shrimp and so you know if you're having snails in your tank and it might be cleaning out a lot of that fluffy algae that you think oh my god my shrimp eat that just remember they're leaving stuff for them behind and uh, shrimp have really small stomachs and they don't really have much digestive capabilities so things like snail poop and, and other broken down things really are beneficial for them because they already have probiotics in there it's kind of pre-digested and then they'll just eat it and pull whatever they want out of there you know they're they're little filter filter dudes they, they they're crazy but so creating a strong cycle you're gonna need some ammonia well I didn't use ADA Amazonia because we're trying out a new soil so I want to make a strong you know colony in there and I need something to kind of just set it off at first because I will be adding liquid bacteria powder I'm using the Fuvel cycle uh, Fluval cycle this is a uh, it's really strong it's really good um, it's really cheap I've I've bought Vins and I really like the way it works he has uh, his nitrifying bacteria and then he has an activator for it I've used them it's great cycling um, a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to get you just have to order these offline um, it's gonna be hard to find you can't really get it from a local pet store or the flugel one it's pretty pretty easy to get it's really relatively cheap I mean you can get a small bottle for five ten bucks but this one the big bottle is only like 16 bucks sorry 19 bucks but still it lasts you for a really long time um, I still have half of it and I've used it to start a bunch of tanks. Make sure you keep your beneficial bacteria in the dark and cold. You want it not to be set off. If it comes alive and it doesn't have anything to live off of, it will die in the bottle and then you're just pretty much dumping dirty water into your tank. It's not going to hurt it, but it's not going to do anything really or help it out. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be using in this tank that has no ammonia. What did I do with them? Oh, they're right here. For one of my favorite shrimp breeders, Bente Shrimp Sanctuary. Check out his channel. Here's a thing right here. The guy is one of the smartest shrimp keepers. He really thinks about stuff. He really breaks stuff down for you. Um, he has a great video on cycling a tank and uh, porosity of your tank and your filter material and everything and how much beneficial bacteria will live in there. And then also signs of knowing your cycle's going, which I really like, like uh, hard signs and soft signs. Hard signs being you know things that you tested like ph and uh, ammonia levels stuff like that but um soft levels being like you know are there copepods in your tank which are little beneficial bacteria that are really small to you know eat help and show a thriving tank um is there are the plants doing well things like that so you know check out his videos they're really amazing and uh he makes these things called lube out and um it's pretty much a biofilm maker. It's a little tea bag filled with beneficial bacteria and uh, like leaves and other stuff, I believe. You can see some videos online of people making them over at Shrimp Time, I know he makes them. Um, but I buy them from Bente. They have two different sizes, a small one <clears throat> for smaller tanks, like 10 gallons, <clears throat> excuse me. And then he has a bigger one for 20 gallons and larger tank. These usually you put in water, RO water, reverse osmosis water, which you hear a lot from me and you're gonna hear more about it because it's really essential to caridinas. With neocaridinas, you don't need it, but with caridina shrimp, which are worth a lot more, a lot more exotic colors, you have to have RO water. It's, it's pretty make or break. You can, there are people, and when everybody starts out, usually they try and do it with their, their sink with faucet water. And uh, you're gambling. You're about there's 50 50 chance that your shrimp are probably gonna die and after you spend money on them and you love them and they're a living creature it's that's horrible but also i i've had shrimp breed and actually thrive in it but then usually the babies only live a couple days and can't really handle the parameters they're too they're, they're too fragile at that point but cycling a tank we're gonna throw one of these loom bow balls straight into the tank and we're gonna let it just do its thing it's also gonna be putting out tannins it might change the water a little bit but when we add this in there we're also gonna be adding in a dose of biological filter and this is gonna start setting off that that nitrifying bacteria cycle that we really need in there um, 
the last thing that I'm going to add is what I just showed you, the thin powder. This powder is just going to build up a bunch of algae and more biofilm and really just create a perfect environment for the shrimp. Um, I'm hoping to do this cycle in 30 days, but like I said, this is a new soil. We're trying it all out, um, but I will be showing you guys the whole way and everything that I do to the tank. Um, if you have any questions, of course, let me know below. Um, I think I think it's really, 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 really important to have patience in, in shrimping. Um, don't buy shrimp till your tank is cycled. And even after it's cycled, keep a close eye on it and you gotta keep that cycle alive till you put shrimp in there. If you already have other tanks, what we usually do is we take a, a little astronaut, a little astronaut full shrimp or someone who, who you know, it's hardy and uh, maybe not your most expensive shrimp and we'll put a couple of those in the tank that we already checked and know is cycled. And then we'll just watch them for a week or two and make sure that they're healthy in there, they're thriving in there and the environment's perfect. And then after that, then I would be comfortable adding in nicer, more expensive shrimp. But don't let it fool you. It could be perfect conditions and hard test everything right ammonia level zero nitrate zero nitrate maybe 2.2 percent or whatever uh ppms um that doesn't mean that it's okay for the shrimp or that the shrimp are going to thrive in it also you have to make sure that you're remineralizing your water with a remineralizer i use vin's uh GH regulator, it only pumps up the GH. We're using reverse osmosis water, so our water is at zero ppm's anything. And so what this ends up doing is it hardens the water enough for the shrimp, putting shrimp minerals in and helping their shells and their whole molting process and them just being comfortable with the proper nutrients. Um, when, we, when we check TDS with a TDS pen, um, total dissolved solid pen, it's just showing you everything in the water, all the total dissolved solids. It doesn't specify what those are. So we know what those are because we add in minerals. There's also powder minerals. You can get, these are for neocaridina. Um, as you can see here, it does the GH and the KH. So um, that'll help the water buffer up to, uh, you know, a standard like seven um, pH using RO water because otherwise our row water itself has no buffering capabilities it's going to be the soil in our tanks that are going to be keeping low pH and that's how we get away with it um, pure RO water actually needs a little bit of KH in the water so it can buffer up to a higher thing and that's for neocaridina shrimp we're getting we're getting neat but regardless I want you guys to know this information and I hope this all helps out um, I'll be adding a bunch more videos to this so just keep keep a close eye. Um, I really, really need to talk about water. Um, I know there's ways to get around it without buying a reverse osmosis unit, but really, if you're serious, buy a, a reverse osmosis unit. You can buy a cheaper one for 60 to hundred dollars. Um, you just set it up anywhere that water's coming in. It could be in a, in a, you know, in a garage or under your sink or anything. You, uh, you can set it up with a little bit, with a, just a, a trash can or, a, or you know a food safe bucket and uh, you can just have your water sitting in there and ready for you and then that way you're not having to go to those refill stations which are also semi untrusty you never know how old the unit is or if it's being maintained and so you're kind of endangering your shrimp too because if anything gets through chlorine chloramines any of that kind of stuff it could be devastating and kill your shrimp so so we know that that's not happening it is worth the investment to get a reverse osmosis unit. Also, if your water's not good, it's not just for your shrimp. You can get a reverse osmosis unit like I did for my kitchen, and I used it for, as drinking water too. And then also, I fill up my buckets and I fill up everything from that. And uh, I'll be showing you more about that. But there's no way to do this and be comfortable without having a reverse osmosis machine. So water is really important. It's what they live in. It's their whole entire life. That's why we cycle. That's why we invest in our own units. That's why we remineralize with shrimp minerals. And then that's why we also focus on this and take the time and take, you know, 
it's worth it. And some people will say you need six months to, to really, you know, mature a tank before you want to put in super nice shrimp. That's a little extreme for me, but what there's no, if your shrimp are thriving and breeding, there's no wrong way. You know what I mean? They like a lot of different conditions and as long as their parameters are right and it's working for you, then you do it. I'm, I'm not a specialist. I'm just really passionate about this. So hopefully what I've learned and what I'm still learning helps. And if you guys know anything that I haven't said, please comment below. I'm trying to constantly learn and trying to add to this. I'll update videos if I feel like I've misinformed anybody on anything. But I want you guys to not kill your shrimp. I want you to be happy breeders. I want you to have live baby shrimp in that tank. Um, by the way, these are my original three breeding tanks that I started with on um, just a cheap Home Depot metal rack. These are these uh, Petco tanks I always talk about. Somehow the sale ended mid-month. I don't know why. I'm super sorry. Um, still, they're really affordable. 10 gallons, like 20 bucks. Um, I think right under or something like that. I got a single sponge filter inside these babies and I'm using Akadama soil, which isn't as fancy, it doesn't put off ammonia, but it really gets the job done and it's really cheap. So look online, it's a bonsai soil and you can also buy smaller bags of it. So say you're just trying to do one or two tanks, you don't have to buy the full big, big bag of soil and spend a lot of money, especially if you're say buying a RO unit, a tank, soil, a little filter and a pump, you know, and you're trying to keep it under 200 bucks or something like that it's possible you gotta be really 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 careful and smart about it and um and just question you know if you have any questions about it don't don't hesitate to hit me up because any way i can help or help you save some money or buy something first the right way instead of like me buying sometimes a couple different things because one didn't work how i thought it would and all that but that's what i'm here for and i'm going to show you guys what i use and how it goes so thank you so much i really appreciate it i hope you guys have a beautiful day again subscribe if you haven't it really helps thanks